Hello everybody, today I will be going over a brief introduction on playing the Irish Ellen Pipes. I'll be discussing three things today, the first being setting up the instrument on yourself so you can get going, the second will be how I hold the chanter and the third thing will be the notation of notes within the chanter itself, so going from a bottom D right up to a high B. So we are now on to setting up the instrument on yourself so you can get going. And before we get into that, would you all mind hitting the little subscribe button and the bell notification? You can see it there. If you just hit subscribe, I really appreciate it. And you can keep up to date with upcoming videos as and to and when they come up. So without uh, further ado, we'll get into it. The very first thing that you want to get going with on the pipes is, well, what I usually pull out of the box is the bellows. And the bellows really are just like like just really just go around the waist like so as you can see and it's something that I would almost call like the lung or the the motor of the instrument it's the thing that keeps everything going while you're playing so if you're right-handed obviously this goes to your right side and if you're left-handed it goes to the other side but when that's when that's on I usually I don't have it too tight um, you know I like to breathe when I'm able to play the pipes when you have that on, the next thing I usually go for is the bag, which has the blowpipe attached to it, as you can see here. And with, with the blowpipe goes into the, the bellows, but on this here part here, like, I like to have enough uh, hemp or thread on it so that everything remains airtight when I'm playing. Because if uh, when you're playing, air is escaping, it just makes things a little bit more difficult for yourself. So make sure everything's nice and airtight when you're playing. And just blowpipe into bellows like so and then what you have obviously is the chanter and that just goes into here I've already have it set up in there so I did previously and lastly then you just put your elbow in through here and tighten it not so tight that your arm falls off but just tight enough and one of the last things again then is this here part here which is called a popping strap or just it's just a piece of leather that when you put it down on your on your lap and you put the chanter down on it it forms a seal so that the air doesn't escape and you don't have any wonky notes coming out so in terms of setting up the pipes that's that's you almost good to go now it's just bellows bag blowpipe goes into the bellows and the chanter goes into there as regards to a practice set that's what you would have um, as you progress you'll be able to get like a half set and drones and all the rest but that would be the startup of the instrument. So on to the next thing and it's just a little technique that I just want to discuss before we actually get uh, holding the chanter and going over the notes and what it is is getting correct airflow from as regards to bellows and bag and the airflow that goes into the chanter itself. A common thing that happens at the start is that people will play with the bellows and obviously you do have to have good nice flowing motion going and the way to get that well I found at the very start is to do this it's just so that you don't play with the bellows and you have nice control of the bag and flow is going to the chanter correctly and it's pull the chanter out of there and just cover a little bit of the, where the chanter goes and just like let your finger off a bit so enough air is escaping out almost to replicate like air going into the chanter so like this it's just so that you're not playing with the bellows going like this it's just that you get proper nice flowing motion at the very start and you know I think it's important at the beginning because habits can form and you know it's it's hard to undo those things so I would do that for about like 30 seconds at the start I just progress, you know, you don't need to do this then, you know, but it's just at the very beginning. I found it very helpful. Just a little bit off there. I'd say four fifths of the hole. And just do that for like 30 seconds. So you get this, this nice flowing motion of the, the bellows and the bag working together. Okay. So that's just like a little technique at the start to, to help you get the, the right motion going. So we are now on to discussing holding the chanter and the major thing or the major takeaway from this here part I would say is to be relaxed. Relaxed in playing it. I know it's an instrument that it doesn't look like you can be very relaxed when you're playing it but as regards holding the chanter I definitely 
most certainly do not hold it tight. And the best way or the best practice I could give, I suppose, to, to holding it would be almost as if your hands are just like laying on a table, like they're just like laying like that or even almost on your, your knees like so. And they're in this like very relaxed position. And from then, from there, I just, uh, as the chancer's just sitting up like this, they just look, they just go in like that. There's no, there's no like major manipulation or anything like that on the, on the hands. They just go in like that. I don't, yeah, they're not tight at all. And with the, as regards to the top hand then, it's the same thing. Look, it's like relaxed, in, relaxed, in. And with the back, with the back of where the, the thumb goes, I don't have it like upright like this. It's, it's to the side for myself when I play. So just relaxed, relaxed, and just in, in, in like that. And that's, that's the way I would hold the chanter anyway, so to speak. So like that and that. We're now onto the notes of the chanter or the, the scale, so to speak. And I'll be talking about uh, going from the bottom D right up to the high B. So we'll just get right into it. One of the first notes that you usually do learn is a, an A or a G or something like that, but I'll, I'll be discussing uh, the bottom D. And the way the bottom D is achieved is having all fingers on the chanter, like so, and the back D obviously on there as well. And make sure you have enough air into the bag and just give a little squeeze of the bag and that's the bottom D. So. And then you have the E, which is five fingers on the chanter, on the on the front of the chanter. So that's index, middle, ring, index, and the middle on the, the bottom hand, and then the thumb at the back, and that gives you an E. So just more pressure under the bag. That's an E. And then we go on to the uh, F, which is this here finger in here. So it's index, middle, ring, and index, and then the middle finger's off on the bottom hand, and then you've got your ring finger and the, the small finger on the bottom hand and the uh, thumb on the back, and just pressure, and you get an F, like so. And then the next note is G. So it is played like this, so it's, the small finger and the index on the bottom, the these two fingers off here on the bottom hand, so that's the index in the middle, and then everything on the top hand remains the same. So you can hear that, it's a G. And then we're on to an A. Now there's two ways to play the, the A. You can play it with sort of like closed fingering or open fingering. But for now, we'll just do close fingering and it'll just be the index, the middle, and the bottom hand has all the, the fingers on. And this is, uh, the thumb is on uh, the back of the chanter and just uh, the ring finger on the, the top hand is off. So just pressure on the bag and you get an A. When you're playing, just try and get a nice consistent flow in the note so it's not like wavering. And that's where the, the previous exercise that we were talking about, just uh, getting good flow from the, the bells in the bag almost comes into play. So, And then the, the last note on that lower octave for here, or actually we'll do a ski C as well, but we'll discuss a B and that is one finger on top, uh, the middle finger off and the ring finger off and then all fingers on the bottom hand and the thumb obviously on the uh, on the, the left hand will be on. So a B is the played like so. You can see. So you get a B sounding out there. And just uh, again, try and get that, just, you know, hold it for uh, a length of time, like sort of five, six seconds. So you just get it nice and clean. And then we have, uh, well actually I'll teach you a C sharp. And C sharp is just the top finger off and uh, the thumbs on, you got your middle finger, your uh, ring finger, and then everything else on the bottom it stays on. So, like so, then it sounds out. 
that's a C sharp and then I'll teach you the C natural which is like so it's a bit it's a it's a more of a different uh, fingering from the rest of the notes it's the middle finger on the bottom hand and then the top finger off on the the left hand and obviously this stays on this stays on you can see here so the the small pinky's on the ring finger on the bottom hand's on the index is on the bottom hand the middle finger is lifted off and the thumbs on and the middle finger and the ring finger on the top hands off so you can just see it there so that's a C C natural okay so that would be for the lower octave notes of the chanter and now we can go on to the the upper octave notes the the higher octave notes of the chanter and we can start with a back D and a back D is played well actually all the the notes in the, the upper octave it usually does require a little bit more pressure in the back to achieve these notes so it's it won't be the same required pressure as the the lower octave notes so you will need to give a little bit more pressure in the back here but a back D is just played by lifting the thumb off here on the top hand like so okay and just should sound out pretty easy and everything else remains the same on on both hands then the the whole front of the chanter is covered uh, right down so I'll just play a back D You can hear it sound out there. And from the back D we go to a high E, and a high E is just like so, like the lower octave notes, but the way to break the octave would be just a little kick and a cut of this here finger here sometimes, and like so. Sometimes it can just, it'll sound out by itself, you won't have to cut, so it'll just be. So it's the same fingering as the as the lower octave uh, E. Same with the the F, like this. So it's just more pressure on the bag just to achieve that note. And then the G, the high G, is uh, very much the same. You can hear that. Now, when we go on to the high A and the high B, uh, things do get, can get a little bit uh, challenging sometimes. It depends on how your your pipes are readed up. Sometimes, you know, you can play, you know, a high A straight out like that, and if the read is, you know, almost like soft enough, and it, it can do it. You you know, you'll know about it, but. To sometimes get up to the high A and the high B, it's good to let these two fingers off here. And it's just, for some reason, it just like voices the instrument out a little bit and it, it, it almost like lets the reed like breathe and just hit those notes a lot easier. So, i just show you here. So uh, I can try and do it with, the, with like a normal A with just more pressure, but it, it does become a little bit harder. So it doesn't want to sound out as much. But if you lift these two fingers off, it can become easier. So. So with these two fingers off, you know, a high A is, is a, a little bit more achievable. And then with a high B then, you have, the, it would be the same thing. Obviously the correct notation is to, to have those down, you know, eventually. But for now to, get, to let the note sound out, we can just go. So it's like a little jump with these two fingers off to, to let the note um, come out. I can try it with the fingers all on. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but... There you go, it proved me wrong, it works. Okay. So, but just to achieve a high B at the start, it's, um, you know, leave these two fingers off, you can, and then put them back down when the high B is achieved. So there you go, that is uh, the upper octave notes. Obviously there is a few more notes uh, 
uh, as regards high notes, you know, you, can, you have the key and going up to the high high D and the high high E, but that's that would be sort of further down the line. But for now, that would be, I would say, you know, the notes that you would need and use mostly uh, to get going. So. Um, that, that, that's pretty much all I have to say about that but uh, thanks very much for watching and if you do get a chance uh, if you could hit a thumbs up or leave a comment and subscribe I really do appreciate that and it, it helps out loads so until the next time thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all soon again